Welcome back to the First Place Auto Parts YouTube channel. I'm Lewis. Typically, I'm taking your calls as a CSR, but today I'm at TRSD, part of our PY, helping them out with one of their project vehicles. They contacted us and asked, hey, what do you guys normally do to your vehicles? How do you outfit them? Well, we said leveling kit, bigger wheels and tires. So today, I'm installing a rugged off-road leveling kit. Pretty simple unit, just bolts to the top of your strut. It gives you about an inch and a half to two inch lift, so you can fit your bigger wheels and tires. So today, I'm gonna to show you how to do that. In addition to the leveling kit, TRSD decided to go with the Shelby America wheels. Uh, they're gonna be running a 275-60R20 tire. So for the guys that can't do the quick math in their head, this is a 33 by 10 inch tire. Plenty enough for this F-150. Both of these products are available from firstplaceautoparts.com. All right, rugged off-road instructions recommend taking off the lower control arm from the front and rear mounts, dropping off the back, take the strut assembly out that way. You can, however, pop your upper ball joint, take off your tie rod end and sway bar in the back, remove all those items and get it out and back in. I'm going to show you how. All right, a safe way to pop your upper ball joint. Loosen your nut up about three quarters of the way, leave a couple threads in it. And instead of using a crow foot or a ball joint press or ball joint tool in the top, which can damage the boot, take a hammer, smack the control arm right here. A couple good pops should separate. Once you get the steering knuckle out of your way, you can access your strut. There's three bolts on the top, two on the bottom can get it through the access panel right here. Thank you Ford engineers, this is the best design I've seen in years. Or pop the hood, going from the top, you can get to them either way. Once you get the lower bolts out, leave the top ones in, take your pry bar, pry it up out of there. This is going to give you just that extra room that you need to get these out of the lower control arm. All right, once you guys have your strut assembly out, you can take your leveling kit here. So this rugged leveling kit does have a little pointer right here up in the top. That pointer will point out from the vehicle. Now, it will only go on the strut assembly one way. Now, once you have it on here, you'll notice though that the mounting bolts at the bottom are angled incorrectly. So you can do a couple different things. You can take and swap your struts from side to side. They'll get them angled the correct way again. If you have a bench vise or something like that, you can put that in there, bend it over to get it at the angle you need. It's really not that hard. It will move in that rubber boot. It just takes a little bit of force. So, put this plate on, use the supplied hardware, silver bolts on the very top, gold bolts right here. I'll get this on and uh, show you the next step. Alright, so we got the top plate on. If you notice, looking at it, it is angled. This is going to help keep the suspension geometry correct, keep the, the strut assembly away from other moving parts so nothing gets bound up or anything like that. So, the next step is my little secret. We are going to drive out the bottom bolts. Getting these out of the way is going to give you a whole lot more room to get these back into place. Adding the uh, inch and a half to two inches on the top takes away any room that you have to get these back into place. So if you've done any lug nuts, you'll know this. It's the exact same thing. These are just knurled in bolts being held into the uh, bottom bar here. All right, so lower bolts, put them into place, tap them with a hammer a couple times, get them to sit, get the neural end to start setting down in the bar. After that, you should be able to just put the nut on from the bottom, draw it up tight. After a while, it'll seat it all the way back down into place. And that is actually how you get the strut in. From here, fold everything else back together. Your, uh, Upper ball joint and control arm are going to be a little bit of a pain since 
we added the space up here, you will have to pull this down a little bit further to uh, connect back with your steering knuckle. You might be able to use a ratchet strap, other items to help it. Or if you are working on the ground, just your standard floor jack underneath your lower ball joint to push everything up into place for you. We'll get this taken care of and we'll show you what it looks like on the wheels and tires. All right, so we've got all the suspension components put back in place, tightened up the torque to spec. Make sure you get your wheels torque to spec as well. Ford recommends 100 foot-pounds for the 17, 150 for the larger 18 and 20 inch wheels. This truck had the 17s on it from the factory. I'm going to torque these down to 115 just to make sure that the Shelby America wheels don't go anywhere. Also, big thing, first drive on this truck, should be heading right down to your alignment shop. All the suspension in here is way out of whack. Get it to the, get it to the suspension shop, let them get everything aligned, keep the truck running straight, and your tires wearing properly. Alright guys, so we got this F-150 taken care of. Hopefully you, this is something that you guys can do in your own garage or your own driveway with standard hand tools with the pointers I gave on this project. Keep an eye out for this truck uh, from either First Place Auto Parts or RPY.com. TRSD or the Right Stuff Detailing does have some amazing things in line for this truck. So, First Place Auto Parts, I'm Lewis. Good luck with your projects.